Erie's been in Eastern Southern Africa for the last two years. We're working in six countries. We're working here, Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi. Um, we're thinking about re-looking at Madagascar where we've been for a number of years before. Our program is based around four uh, objectives. One obvious is the germplasm as you can see behind you, which all institutes tend to be involved with. The other one is in the production, post-production um, and mechanisation area, which I'll talk about briefly in a minute. We also have an, an area of, of interest obviously in the social economics and the policy issue. Because in this part of the world, if you don't understand the economics and you can't convince governments in terms of policy and, and policy support, you're never going to win. The fourth one is we have a program where we're actually at village level, taking on whole production in village level from, from land preparation, seeding, cropping, right through to the milling process and marketing, so a whole chain. And that allows us to take promising technologies very quickly down to farmer level and get it tested. So that's a quick overview. We're also working with water in, this, in Eastern Southern Africa. Uh, those people that were around in Rice many years ago, Erie and water tended to be separated. As of this year, we basically combined our program, so we're running an aligned program between the two institutes. And in fact, in Tanzania, early next year, we're combining the office. Today, what we're going to talk about is obviously mechanisation behind me and the germplasm side of it. I firmly believe in this, this part of the world, unless we bring energy into this system, we're never going to go anywhere. You hear, you know, we're going to double production in 10 years, all these issues. Hopefully you can do some supplementary irrigation by putting a small pump with it. And then the other end of that issue is with this machine out here, the thresher, farmers can thresh on time. Because what we're seeing is in, the, in here, for instance, in Mozambique, if they plant in uh, from September through to December, you're looking at a potential five tonnes in an irrigated area. You go January, February, you're down to three tonnes. So we've got to try and get in early. Obviously, when everything's hand ho, chip ho, they have to wait for rain. Whereas if we can mechanise it, obviously we can get in early. The other part on the thresher is that farmers will wait till their crop gets down to 15 or 16 per cent moisture because they will hand thresh over a drum. If we can get crops off at 22, 23%, we're actually saving up to a month to six weeks of getting the crop out of the field because here crops dry much slower than they do in Asia. So leaving a crop in the field for six weeks doesn't make it. We're already having a mechanical thresher built in Laputa for work here. So that's the sort of system we see will develop. We are in the process of su supporting small enterprise in, in manufacturing equipment. We're not only helping them on the manufacturing and the technical side, we're talking about bringing in business plans and helping them on the business management side. In a similar way with our village level program, we are looking at production from land preparation right through to marketing and processing of the crop. The part we're also obviously involved in is post-harvest, and losses in this part of the world are between 5 to 50 percent. Massive. And it's not just in quantity, it's in quality. Um, we are very keen on hermetic storage, and you can see there there's those plastic bags, those hermetic bags. Um, but also, we've, we've localised them to some degree that, that we can turn that into an hermetic storage system, just basically by putting a bit of grease in the cap, filling it with grain, and work. And we see this will, will certainly for seed go a long way in helping this preservation of seed. Because one of the things we, we've seen here is the seed rates are excessively high. Most of the farmers will be planting up to 150 kgs per hectare. Now in a broadcast scenario, we should be able to get them down to 60 to 70. If we can actually have um, viable seed, which this system will give us, this will double the life of seed. So that in itself will, will help in, in, in going a long way in terms of seed viability. Um, I guess people say, you know, you bring in mechanisation, there's always a cost. Yes, there is. But by understanding the system here, and a lot of the villages here are now working in co-ops anyway, we see what's going to happen is they will collectively buy a walking tractor, something like this here, which will do 15 hectares. They'll collectively build a thresher. So in that way, it'll become a contractual sort of basis as well. The other thing we have also developed 
is farmer level moisture meters or village level moisture meters because we keep telling farmers to store crops you need to have them below 14 percent and yet they just use the old calibrated tooth to do it. These we developed at Erie that are now superseded models which just basically say red, green and blue. Um, these ones cost $30, the other ones cost $50, but a commercial moisture meter is $200 to $300, which obviously farmers and village can't afford. So we're sort of trying to put the package together.